welcome. We're going to be talking about Newton's second law and how it relates to tangential acceleration. So we've already talked about uniform circular motion, um, where that's motion where an object moves around the circle at a constant speed. And um, just to review just real quickly, if an object's moving around at a constant speed, like say 10 meters per second the whole time around, then um, it's going to have an, a centripetal acceleration, AC, centripetal acceleration that's um, V squared over R. So how fast it's moving, 10 meters per second, square that and divide by the radius um, of, the, of the circle. And that gives you the centripetal acceleration. Okay, the centripetal acceleration is always toward the center. So this, the centripetal acceleration would be center seeking. That's why it's called centripetal. And it would be that way. And it'd be AC would be V squared over R. Okay, so, uh, but how do you handle um, an object that's going around a circle or going through a curve and it's speeding up? So um, let's just review this. We've already covered this a little bit, but let's just review this. Let's say an object's going um, along this path like this, and there's three spots we're going to look at. We're looking at um, spot one, spot two, and spot three. And um, so as it's going, it's let's say it's speeding up as it goes. All right, so if it's speeding up, then um, that means that it must have a tangential acceleration. So the tangential acceleration is tangent to the velocity. In other words, it's in the same direction as the velocity. So if the velocity is this way, put a little v there. And this one has a v this way. It's bigger because it's speeding up, so that's a bigger v. And then this one has the biggest v because it's really, it's really going fast there. So that's the, the last v. So that's v sub 3, maybe v sub 2, and v sub 1 right there. Okay, so um, if that's the case then, the acceleration um, is also, the centripetal acceleration I'll put in green, it's going to be this way. So it might be accelerating that way. So that's a, I'm sorry, the tangential acceleration rather is that way. And the tangential acceleration would be this way. And the tangential acceleration would be this way. Now, it also, um, if it's turning, it also has a centripetal acceleration. So the centripetal acceleration is toward the center of the circle. So even though this is not going in a circle, at any given point, it's, it's got a, a curvature. The, the path has a curvature that has a certain radius to it. So we treat that like it's circular motion then. So let's say that the circle that this is going in might look something like this. And so the radius would be... The radius would be like um, here, and so the centripetal acceleration would be toward the center. That's A sub C. So we got um, A tangential and A centripetal. The total acceleration, we just artificially break it into A tangential and A centripetal. The total acceleration is going to be really um, the addition of the centripetal and the tangential. So it would look maybe something like this. It's the, the vector sum of both of those. Hey, um, this one's going in a straight line here, so it's not turning. So the radius of curvature uh, is, well, sometimes people will say that if an object is going in a straight line, the radius of curvature is infinity, meaning that um, if you go in a circle that has a radius of infinity, then you're going in a straight line. Um, so, um, so there is no ten, um, centripetal acceleration. Hey, keep in mind the centripetal acceleration down here is still v squared over r. And then just something that's kind of neat um, for this one, it's, it's going to be the centripetal acceleration is zero because it's not turning right in this straight part. So that would be the speed squared, but the radius of curvature of a straight line, it's got this infinite radius. So it'd be like dividing by infinity. When you divide by infinity, that goes to zero. So this is no acceleration. And then up here, um, it's going to have a centripetal acceleration that's toward the center this way. So it's a, that's the centripetal acceleration, A sub C. And then the total acceleration would be just these two combined. So it looks like that. That's your total acceleration. 
Okay, now how do you handle that mathematically though? So um, it turns out that um, it's the same way we do all our Newton's second law problems. So you know, this is Newton's second law, A equals F net over M. And so um, if we, uh, sometimes we break this artificially, break it into an X direction, a Y direction, and a Z direction. So the, centripetal, uh, the acceleration in the X direction is the net force in the X direction divided by the mass. The acceleration in the y direction is the net force in the y direction divided by the mass, and so on. So we draw a free body diagram, and then we might break these forces into x and y directions. And it turns out that Newton's laws apply in all three directions. Well, if something's going in a circle and it's speeding up or slowing down, then we can do the same thing, except we break it into a, a, a tangential direction and a radial direction. So... I'll show you what I mean in a moment. But, and then, so we say that the centripetal acceleration is equal to the net force along the radius divided by the mass. And the tangential acceleration is the net force that's, that's tangent to the motion, or in other words, perpendicular to the radius, divided by m. Uh, just a little bit of uh, notation here. Some physics books call it centripetal acceleration for center seeking. But um, sometimes problems will use the radial acceleration. It means the same thing, centripetal acceleration or radial acceleration, meaning along the radius. Centripetal is toward the center. A is a radial is along the radius. And um, sometimes it's designated with an A sub uh, with a perpendicular sign there for, um, rate for um, perpendicular to the velocity. That, so the A, is, the, the A they're talking about is the A that's perpendicular to the velocity. We sometimes use a tangential. Usually it's not written out in this full term. Maybe it will be called a tan, a sub tan. But sometimes we use a parallel, meaning it's parallel to the velocity. All right. So let me show you a problem on how this would work out then, how, how we would use these two to get the tangential and radial acceleration. So we're going to take a, a problem where there's a person on a swing, let's say, and um, they are hoisted all the way up to some where the chains of the swing are horizontal to the ground. And then they, you let go of that person and the person swings down through the vertical and swings all the way back up. So they're going to, this is that way, that way is the down direction. And this is swinging like that. And we're going to take a very particular point um, in this motion right here when um, it's making an angle theta with the vertical. And um, let's say that the length of this swing is, the length of that swing is L and um, the mass of the swinger is M. And let's just say that the, the um, L is all the way to, from. it's not just the length of the string, it's the from the pivot point all the way to the center of mass, let's say. Okay, so um, we're not gonna figure out what the V is um, let's, I'm just going to say that the V is just V. So this is going to be, um, the velocity is just some V right there. Now, in a regular uh, problem, they might have you figure out the V. And so to figure out this V, like if they told you the height she fell from, that she was swinging from, the, the, where this is horizontal, then maybe what you would do is you would... Um, use the ener energy conservation and you say the potential energy at the top is equal to the uh, potential energy and kinetic energy here. There's, there's lots of ways to find the V of this thing. But I will tell you that you can't use a kinematics equation that um, the kinematics equations that insist on constant acceleration. Because um, as, she's ex as she's accelerating down, um, her acceleration is not constant. So you have to, so energy conservation is the way to go with that. But for right now, we're just going to say her speed right there is v, and so um, what we want to know now is um, like what is her tangential acceleration? What's her what's her centripetal acceleration? And maybe what's the tension in the cord too? We'll figure all this out. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a free body diagram of this. So um, there's only eight, two forces on her. There's the force of gravity, which is straight down, mg. And then um, there's a force of tension. I'm along the rope. Rope's only pull. So 
so F sub T. And um, you might say, well, isn't there um, some air resistance? And yeah, there could be air resistance. We're going to say it's negligible, but if there were, it's going to be um, in the opposite direction of the velocity. So she's heading straight downward, so it'd be upward. That's, but we're going we're gonna to say air resistance is negligible. Okay, now rather than drawing our coordinate system to study this problem as an x and y coordinate system, we, we could do that, but we, it would make the problem more difficult uh, because then she would be accelerating in both the x and the y directions, and then so that would be, that would get, that might be, uh, it just would get a little bit ugly. So what we do instead is we um, have a, a coordinate system that's going to be along the x, y, uh, along the radial direction, and then along the, ta the tangent to the circle she's going into. So it's going to look something like that. Those are my two directions. Now notice FT is in the radial direction, but MG, I could break that into um, a, a component that's um, in the radial direction, and then another component that's in the tangential direction. Perfect. Okay, now this is theta. Can you see these two lines that are parallel? M, the line that MG is making and the vertical, they're both vertical, so they have, have to be parallel. And um, so theta here, this also has to be theta here because they're alternate interior angles right there. So those are the same angle. And so if um, our, this is the, this is, these are at right angles, and that's theta, this is the hypotenuse, so that means, and that's equal to mg, so this right here is mg uh, sine of theta, and this one right here is mg cosine of theta. Okay. All right, so that said, now I'm just going to apply Newton's second law in both directions. So I'm going to start out by saying that the centrip a centripetal is going to be the net force in the, in the radial direction. Hey, the net force in the radial direction is the centripetal force. Centripetal force is, um, is just the net force in the radial direction. Okay, so I got that going. And then I'm also going to um, draw. I'm going to um, apply Newton's second law in the tangential direction. So a tangential is equal to the net force in the tangential direction all over m. Okay, so um, we're going to do these um, just in parallel fashion, like we're going to develop them both. Um, let me start out with this one. A centripetal is always v squared over r, so I'm going to just switch that to v squared over r, and um, where r is the length of the string, and v is how fast she's going there. The centripetal, uh, so the centripetal force is going to be the net force in the in the um, radial direction. So. Ft is is in the, let's say the positive direction, and so but mg cosine theta is in the negative direction, so it's going to be Ft minus mg cosine of theta. That's the net force in the along the radial direction, all over m. So you see, I can now find what the tension is. Uh, maybe I'll bring this the m on the other side and then um, bring the mg cosine theta on, on the other side. So in other words, Ft, the tension in the rope, is going to be um, mv squared over r, the length of the swing, uh, plus, because when you bring it on the other side, it turns into a positive, mg cosine of theta. So that's the tension. So we just found the tension in the swing for any given theta. And um, so how does the tangential acceleration work? So a tangential, if you look, there's only one force in the tangential direction, and that is mg sine theta. So I'm going to say um, a tangential. It doesn't turn into v squared over r or anything like that. That's only the centripetal that does. But um, a, tan um, a tangential is equal to the net force in the tangential direction, so there's only one force, it's mg sine of theta, 
all over um, the mass. So the mass can cancel and we're left with that A tangential is equal to G sine of theta. So now we know how fast she's speeding up right at that point. G times the sine of theta, um, that's how fast she's speeding up. Hey, let's look at, um, we're done with this, except I want to just take a look at um, right when um, this person gets released at the very top when, this, when the chain is horizontal and she's stopped. And I also want to look at the part where th she's coming through right at the very bottom. Like, how, what is, what is um, the physics of that? So, first of all, at the very top, if you look, when she stopped, um, then um, V is zero. So this term is zero. So the, so in terms of the tension in the rope, this term is zero because she stopped, if, assuming that she has stopped up there. Now, um, when you do cosine of theta, that would be cosine of 90 degrees. Well, the cosine of 90 degrees is zero. So if you put in 90 degrees for, um, for theta, then, you, then this whole term turns into zero. So Ft, the tension up here, will be zero. And indeed, the rope, like if you go and, and uh, t try to twang that, those chains, you'll see that there's, there's no tension in them at that point. Okay? Um, what about the acceleration right when you, when you let go? at the very top. Well, the acceleration, you got sine of 90 degrees. The sine of 90 is one. So the acceleration is just 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so at the top, she's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared and there's no tension in the chain. Okay, how about when she comes through the vertical? When she comes through the vertical, um, let's see. The, the tension, first of all, the cosine of um, zero degrees would be one. And so this, the tension at the bottom, the tension would just be um, m times v squared, and she's moving a lot faster at the bottom, so that's, this term is going to be the biggest it's ever going to be, but plus mg, because the cosine of theta is just 1. And so that's going to be her tension at the bottom. And um, what will be her tangential acceleration? Well, if you, um, her, ex her tangential acceleration would be g times the sine of zero degrees. Well, the sine of zero degrees, when she's at the bottom, that's going to be zero. So her tangential acceleration is zero at the bottom. Okay. All right. Well, that's all I had to tell you for today. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for visiting. Bye.